Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to be giving a quick overview of braced versus unbraced frames and how to identify them. So when we talk about braced frames versus unbraced frames, the basic, um, I guess, description that would separate the two categories is the following. So member ends will not translate with respect to each other in braced frames or members. Okay, so that's the biggest um, distinguishing factor between a braced frame and an unbraced frame, okay? Now, the other um, aspect that kind of goes hand in hand with braced versus unbraced frames is um, side sway or non-swat side sway occurring, okay? So we can also say um, side sway versus non-side sway. So what is side sway and non-side sway? Well, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. If um, in the plane of the frame, if there is a uh, translation of one you know, end of the frame with respect to the other, one end of the member with respect to the other, side sway is occurring. Otherwise, it would be um, no side sway is occurring. Now, in general, we're going to change colors here. In general, in general, um, braced frames will not experience side sway due to loading. Okay, so if you have a braced frame, it's going to be, quote, braced against side sway. So we'll put a little quote there, braced against side sway, okay? Side sway will not uh, occur in braced frames in general, all right? Especially if you're dealing with linear elastic behavior, okay? Now, what about um, unbraced frames, okay? Unbraced frames can experience side sway, but sometimes may not depending on the applied loading. So if you have an unbraced frame, it's definitely susceptible to side sway. Unbraced frames will definitely be susceptible to side sway, but whether or not it actually experiences side sway is gonna depend on the loads that it's supporting, the actual loads that it's supporting, okay? So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Braced frames will, will in general never experience side sway, but unbraced frames, while they, they are susceptible to side sway, sometimes they may not actually experience side sway depending on the kinds of loads that it's supporting. So let's, let's take a look at some examples here, okay? Um, so we'll say EG, some examples, all right? Let's look at um, a simple case of a portal frame with X bracing. Okay, um, experience, uh, experiencing some load application. Okay, what kind of frame is this just by looking at this? Well, this is a braced frame, okay? This is a braced frame and that will not experience side sway. How do we know? Well, again, these diagonal members, these are supposed to be straight diagonal members, even though it's not my best uh, artwork. These diagonal members are bracing this portal frame against experiencing side sway. So no side sway will occur, even though 
um, you have a, a low a lateral load P um, you know acting on the frame okay and again we're, we're assuming linear elastic material behavior by the way just to be clear on that um, okay let's look at another one let's look at this two member L frame what if you have a frame that looks like this supporting some load P um, again this is a braced frame braced frame and it will not experience side sway how do I know that well um, this two member frame its horizontal member here is uh, bracing the entire system laterally okay so when it's exposed to this lateral load P this this frame um, its members ends will not translate with respect to one another due to this horizontal member laterally bracing it okay so it's not gonna for example um, it, you know under normal loading linear elastic behavior it won't experience uh, P capital Delta effects all right um, let's look at some cases of uh, of um, unbraced frames maybe all right so what if we have a situation like this what if we have that a similar portal frame that we saw a minute ago but without the X bracing and you know, we have a lateral load P here and maybe we have some other loads here okay this is an unbraced frame unbraced frame so notice there, there are no additional members no diagonal members here that would prevent this frame and thereby its members from uh, experiencing, um, you know, relative end translation. So like if I were to draw the deflected shape of this, you know, the deflected shape may look something kind of like this. And you see we have this capital delta here. We have this, uh, these capital delta values. So that's a lateral translation, okay? So that's an unbraced frame and um, due to the applied loading, side sway, side sway occurs. Okay. What about, what about again, another similar frame? Let's draw a similar portal frame. Now let's say that in this portal frame, you have a point load P right in the middle of that horizontal member. So that's L over two and L over two. So in this portal frame, this is an unbraced frame. This is an unbraced frame, of course. Okay, you have no um, extra members present, you know, preventing it from swaying. But, but due to the symmetrically placed load no side sway will occur for this kind of loading. So um, whether or not side sway occurs, it, it, uh, for unbraced frames, it's also gonna be dependent on the geometry of the loading. So for example, you know, um, how is this thing gonna deform? Well, you know, this will uh, bow down like this and then this will probably pop out like this and then taper back to the fixed connection. So no actual capital delta uh, values here would, um, would happen laterally, all right? So, um, so again, it, sometimes when you have an unbraced frame, it's tricky to, um, to recognize a side sway going to occur or not gonna occur. But again, it depends on the applied loading. A rule of thumb in steel design, if you have an unbraced frame, you need to just design for the case that side sway may occur, okay? So rule of thumb is, um, you know, we'll put a little star here. Um, so for all unbraced frames, design as if sway will occur at some point during the life of the structure, okay? Um, so that's kind of, you know, from a design perspective. So let's look at one more example. I always like this little illustration uh, just to see what you think. What happens if you have a portal frame like this 
And let's say, you know, you have this nice symmetric loading again. There's another example of symmetric loading W, but you have different flexural rigidities for each of the members. Let's say this is EI1 and EI2, and then of course EI1 and EI2 are not equal. In this case, this is definitely an unbraced frame. Okay, we know that unbraced frame and side sway will occur, all right? Now, in this case, you have symmetric loading for sure. So it seems like you may fit into the same category we just saw right above here. But the reason why side sway will occur is because your flexural rigidities of the two vertical members are different from one another. So because they're different, depending on, you know, which flexural rigidity is greater, not only will you have, you know, some, um, you know, vertical deformation here, but, you know, you'll have some, uh, some other capital delta effects happening to, not my best illustration, here we go. Okay, because basically each of these vertical members, that their stiffnesses are not equal, their flexural rigidities are not equal. So one of them is going to deform differently than the other, thus creating a side sway case, even though you have symmetrical loading. So that's why I was saying, you know, with this double star note here, for all embraced frames, just design them as if sway is going to occur, because, you know, in reality, nothing's perfect and something um, could cause sway to occur, even though you, it may seem like you have symmetric, nice loading, okay? So again, this is a video of us being able to recognize braced frames versus unbraced frames, and then, you know, a little bit of commentary on how sway or non-sway will occur under different scenarios. Thanks for watching.